Yeah, so this is overtime, and uh, OT. Kevin, there's uh, subjects we want to talk about. Uh, Thomas Tyner. Big news. Big news uh, coming out of the Oregonian and John yes. Canzano um, earlier. Um, Thomas Tyner, a uh, little bit of background on him. He was a uh, University of Oregon running back, uh, medically retired due to a catastrophic injury suffered at the hands of Shaq Thompson. Remember Shaq. Um, and uh, he just couldn't get back to his playing, his normal playing self. It, it was a nagging injury. Yeah, so he medically retired. And uh, to kind of give you some background on what that is, uh, different than a medical redshirt, a medical retirement basically, it does a couple of things. One is it's basically saying I'm not gonna be playing anymore, but I still wanna get my degree and he can keep his scholarship. And the NCAA will allow Oregon to give his spot his scholarship to someone else so there's two things going there there's One benefiting is, factors for both right teams. so he's getting his degree he's actually finishing up his degree uh in the next couple of weeks or so um and that uh that scholarship went to another player so this is the reason why you couldn't um go back to oregon is because uh that scholarship was given up and you'd have you would there was be no way for um, Oregon to be able to extend that scholarship and it counts against him the the second year would count against him I believe so in any case uh, I can see the benefit of that I, I, I get it I understand so that. now uh, he's uh, been thinking about this comeback I guess recently um, and actually said he's gonna do it now he he's basically saying he only wants to play for one team and that's the Beavers since he can't play for the Ducks now it's the Oregon State Beavers or bust. He doesn't want to play for anybody else. Excellent running back. He, I mean, he had some terrific games uh, for the Ducks. In fact, uh, Florida, State. Uh, Florida State in the Rose Bowl, mm -hmm. excellent uh, game for him. Um, so anyway, he's going to be uh, attempting. Now, there's no scholarship guarantee right now. He's said he's willing to walk on. He wants to get back into football that bad. Uh, that he's willing to just walk on, but he doesn't want to go to any other school. Well, let me tell you about, a, about something, though, really. It's a psyche of a player. Uh, any player that knows that they, that they went out on, on, a, on, a, on a bad deal or, you know, and we're talking NFL, we're talking about a bad deal, but when you talk about a college player, they went out in a way of where they didn't want to leave. It was an injury that kept them from coming back, and a nagging injury at that. Uh, torn labrum is no joke. Uh, because it is something of the shoulder region. And so, again, pads... Well, you can't take hits. Pads pop. Yeah. Pads pop. When, 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 when uh, a defensive player is taught how to wrap up and tackle, the first thing they're using is their shoulder. Not their head anymore, but it's their shoulder. And when they do that... They pop yeah. the other well, shoulder. Well, and that, and to drive that player into the ground, too. On so, the shoulder. Yeah, if you're going to drive, there's just no way. You're, that is a catastrophic injury. Um, he could not come back from it. Um, he basically had to take a medical retirement. We, I, and I get that. Yeah. The thing about it for me, though, is the psyche of the player. Because now, during that time frame, and any injury a player faces, in the back of their mind, when they go back to that, that, that game, or they go back to being on the field or can that they one overcome play, it that mental part yeah, of it, can they overcome that, that mental part of it is so huge well and it depends i think kevin on what he's been doing the last two years obviously right. he's been going to school uh he is which is great graduating concentrate so, on school education first yes. we talk about that yes. education first and then football um but yeah you're you're looking at a guy what has he been doing the last couple of years has he been working out has he been strengthening that shoulder uh, what has he been, has been running? What's he been doing? And we, and we don't know those we details. Don't, we don't know. We have no clue in understanding those details, but again, it makes it interesting to me why it's one team or bust. Well, it's, it's it, interesting it, it, to, to me, me on this, uh, in this respect, is that he's going to a team that has an established running back that is a bit, pretty much an every down back. No. So, so even if you do make the squad, where's your playing time going to come from and and remember when he was at Oregon that was always an issue it was one of the issues that uh when recruited by Chip Kelly uh the thing was is that the depth chart because you had running backs oh yeah there you know that were you know when he was a freshman there were senior junior running backs that are above him so 
He was always, even if it was a situation where, and I can remember this, there was one time during the season where he was the leading running back. He was getting touches. He was getting the balance of attack, of, of getting the balance of the majority of the majority of the, majority snaps, of the, yeah. of the snaps as a running back. But then he gets injured. Mm -hmm. And anytime, you know this, as an athlete, anytime you deal with an injury, you lose on the depth chart automatically because there's other players that now are put into that into your position. You're healing from that injury and now you have to work yourself back. Well, and then he's been out for two solid years and so he's not, time. he's out of football shape. Even if he's been running and even if he's been lifting, um, he's not quite in football shape. Now define football shape. Okay. So this is interesting. So, so this is where you got So football shape. Um, who's hitting you? There's no <laughs> tackling being done when you're running a, around the block or even on a track. Uh, you, Treadmill, you, weights. Yeah, you, you can lift all the weights you want, but you're not getting hit by a 250-pound linebacker. And, and, and remember, getting hit, there's getting hit with a bag and getting hit with blunt force trauma. So that, in other words, you're, you're, you're talking about a player going at a speed with his weight and making impact with you yep. versus a bag where it's pretty much the, the person's holding the bag and thrusting the bag that's already got some padding and jolting you versus a player with speed, mass, you know. That well, and it makes sense that you would take this much time off anyway if you have that catastrophic of an injury. True. Uh, you had to medically retire. So it makes sense, but you're not in football shape. You've been out of football for two years. What is it gonna look like? And obviously you haven't been in spring training Right. You haven't been at the spring game, and the spring game was early March, March 18th, I think, um, for Oregon State. So it was early on this year. Um, so again, he obviously couldn't because he's still enrolled at Oregon getting his degree. So I think this has probably been planned for some time from him. Uh, from I believe he's planned it for a while, uh, maybe over the last 12 months or so. Uh, trying it's been, to, it's been, it's in the been there. Mind, he, he, you know? yeah. Basically, his hands were tied. He's trying to get back to football, but he has to graduate. He's got. He's enrolled at Oregon. He's fulfilled his obligation there, and he's kept the promise to himself of making sure he gets his degree, um, and to his family, I'm sure. So now he's ready to graduate, and he's eligible to go to another school. So, so, so oh, By the way, Oregon had to grant his release. That's the other caveat that, to this. Yes, that's true. So Oregon had to say, okay, go ahead. And they didn't put a caveat on that to say, hey, well, you can go anywhere, but don't go to Oregon State. Right. Remember, they got beat by that's Oregon State last year. That's your civil war, that's rival. And Ryan Null ran all over the Ducks. Right. So again, you're looking at what he's going to be able to contribute to the Beavers this next year. Maybe it's not a lot. You got Ryan Null that's going to take probably the majority of the stat snaps. And you've got some other running backs there. Uh, but what do you think this future would hold for Thomas Tyner if he's able to make it back into Oregon State? What does that look like for this next year? Well, think? first of all, you're talking about a player that really is, has got school out of the way. That's huge. A lot of times for an athlete having, being on and off the field, dealing with school and then having to play, being prepared for the games and all that, that's a lot. That takes a lot of it to players. So they have to find a way to juggle that. So because he doesn't have school, he's going to be graduated. Now he's coming in to go, you know, taking some probably some courses at Oregon State, you know, to be active. Right, probably enroll in a graduate grad, program. Graduate program, which is good. I think that's, it bodes well for him for his education and, and, and his future after football. But I think the thing is, though, what does his future look like? There's two things. One is the mental part of it. When I was, when I was talking about that earlier, the, he has to get over the mental part of the injury. Well, if you that, get, that has the to first, happen first. The first hit from someone the size of Shaq Thompson is probably going to be... Or, or, or a defensive end landing on you on your shoulder. Because yeah. automatically you're thinking to yourself, you're going, oh boy, this, it's instant. Okay, the hit is instant. But it's the after effect. As soon as you land and hit the ground on that shoulder... First thing that goes back to is that that memory. Well, and hopefully it's all the way healed. But yes, you're you're probably going to deal with the what ifs. What, if, what if I get hit? An I, athlete the same deals way. with that. What if I get hit? What if I've overcompensated? There's a lot of injuries that 
you know, especially with the legs, where if you get injured in one leg, you end up overcompensating, and then you have problems in the other leg. Um, That's the concern I have with being out too long. A lot of times you found it with players, and this doesn't happen for everybody, but with a lot of players that have been away from football, away from the hitting, away from the grind, they get back into it. You find it that, number one, two years out of a program, out of football, you're two years older. Mm Mm-hmm. You're not two years younger. So you're getting older. Yes, you may be mature when it comes to being in the system and everything. But again, you're two years older. So again, health can be a concern uh, for Gary Anderson with him. Well, and, you know, you you root for the kid. I mean, really, I mean, uh, if you're a Ducks fan, uh, obviously you're you're torn because you want to root for the kid because... You know, he did good for you. He's coming from your university. He's graduating. He's going to be an alum. But then he's going to go to your hated in-state rival. There's a lot of fans that have an issue with Um, that. From a fan perspective, that's a lot of it. But And then if they're going to be coming back to play the Ducks next year with Thomas Tyner potentially running over you again, I mean, there's a lot of – there could be some animosity there. Uh, But, again, you – you can't help but root for this kid to no. to make it even to the next level. I mean, right. he's a five star recruit originally. Five foot nine, two hundred and one pounds. Uh, probably even more, so you can get more mass on him. But still, speed. I mean, guy's a great back. Yeah. So you're 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 looking, and hopefully from his perspective, I'm sure he's looking beyond college, that somebody out there would give him a chance. Uh, coming up in a couple of years, one or two years, mm-hmm. depends on on how he performs this next year. And again, you're playing it behind Ryan Nall. So who knows how you can... Now, remember we had uh, a a DeAnthony Thomas for the Ducks who uh, came in and spelled and was a change of back uh, at at one time uh, and basically was so fast, lightning fast. um, And I think in the Rose Bowl, he had two runs, ended up with 70 yards and two (laughs) touchdowns, but that's the only two times he touched the ball. Right. Which, you know... (laughs) So... Similarly, and of course he played in the NFL. He's, he's you know, uh, an NFL player. So is there hope for him? And I think if he can get that mental aspect that you're talking about, I think he has hope. I, I think that is very true because when you get rid of the mental part of it, that, that's where the hope comes from is being able to have that shot. Now, did you build up that area? Do you have, did you focus on that area? Did you get the treatment? Did you get the needed operation that you needed to have that? Uh, I think will be will be crucial to find out where he's at. But I think the thing is, is that this is a player that's getting another shot. Let's look at it. What it is? It's a player getting another shot, which to doesn't play for happen program. very often. It does not happen. No, you Usually, get, a person medical redshirts or retires, they're done. Well, medical retirement. Yeah, that's it. It's it's over. And it doesn't happen very often. I mean, a player gets injured, even on a catastrophic knee injury, they're usually back that next year. But but tell but tell me this. Think of how Gary Anderson is feeling right about now. So oh. you have you have Nall, and now you have Thomas Tyner. Well, and so you have you have a bruiser, yeah, and a speedster. You have a one-two well, punch. Well, and uh, make no mistake about it, Thomas Tyner is also a bruiser. Right. So he has two elements to his game. He's fast and he's strong. Uh, so you have a change of pace, but don't sleep on Thomas Tyner. If he's going to be back to the his former self in any shape or form, even if he's at 90% of his former self. He's going to be a load. There's two things that I got to tell you about that, though. There's one, one part of it I disagree with you on that. The one part I disagree with as far as the bruising part of it, every time that he tries to create contact, it's a piece that he could possibly be, be thinking of, I could get hurt on the So, play. yeah. So, if so, you so have that's the what mental I'm part, if, if, if you have the mental part taken there, care there, of. That's what I'm saying. If, if you Remember what you're doing is when you're playing and you're taking that snap, you're running, either you're the one that gets the contact or you're the one that creates the contact. Either way. So my point to you is this is he has to be a smart player now. Now it's if you're two years older. Now, Thomas, you have to be a smarter player when it comes down to do I look for contact? In your situation, depending on the injury, we don't know. We don't know if it's healed 100 percent I would think it would be, but you aren't looking for the contact. Case in point, let's let's let's, let's choose a play. He runs in, he runs a, a, a sweep. Sweep left, gets downfield blocking. Now, he has two decisions. One is to use those blocks and get more yardage, 
or or go down. Go go out, go out or of bounds. Go, 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 out, out, go, go out, go out of bounds. You, you get those yards, but then you go out of bounds. So again, well, but here's the deal. I don't believe that he would be making a comeback if he wasn't healed. Yeah. If he was, if he was, right. if there was any question about whether he's healed up, I don't think he would make a comeback. But I believe he's healed up. The only issue is for me is whether or not mentally he can make those reps. Does he dive? Does he get out of bounds? Is it? Does he play scared, or does he return to his former self and he runs over people? I mean, it's. There's that fine line, again, between, okay, I don't want to get hurt. I have a shot at making the NFL. If I just stay healthy, I can make the NFL, mm-hmm. possibly. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you cannot play scared. You, you cannot, cannot play with fear. That's when you get injured. That's, exactly. There's the, two, the mental aspect of this is very critical because, again, I think he would be 100% healed up or else you don't make that comeback. Can you do, and you brought it up, it was a great point about the mental part of it. Can he do it? I mean, I think, I think he has a shot, and I think it would be very interesting to watch this kid this next year. Tune in to Oregon State Beavers football this yes. next year and look for Thomas Tyner. He won't be starting because you got Ryan Nall, barring injury, of course. Uh, but look for him as a change of pace back and whether or not he can make this team. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. I think the thing is, too, is that, you know, there's a reason he's at that school, and it was Oregon State or bust. This is a school that really, with Gary Anderson, the program, their biggest win was really beating Oregon. So to me, you're going to a school that doesn't get a lot of national attention. It just doesn't uh, in Oregon State. Uh, it's, it's getting there with Gary Anderson, what he's trying to do. He's building something. But right now, where we speak at, right now for Thomas Tyner, it's, it's a place where he can really play football, be under a little bit under the radar, uh, not have that pressure, as it were, uh, to really have to perform at, say, a high-caliber level like Oregon. Mm-hmm. So this has been the Fat Show Overtime. I'm D. I'm Kevin. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you.